This is the Mosh Pit Backstage Podcast for punk, metal and rock interviews and segments. Hi, this is Dave from Psychroptic, and you're listening to the Mosh Pit on Sin. Dave Haley is the drummer for Psychroptic, who will be playing at the Thrash, Blast and Grind Festival coming to Melbourne on the 17th of February at Max Watts. He also drums for Ruins, who released their fifth album, Undercurrent, in October. Dave, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Now, the Thrash, Blast and Grind Festival, what is it? Good question, good question. Um, well, it's... It's basically a lineup that uh, myself and Youngie from King Parrot um, put together um, as an idea, um, just to put together an affordable, kick-ass, varied metal package that um, will uh, hopefully get people uh, off the couch and uh, in front of the stage. How did you get involved in the festival? Um, I would have been unaware that you had some involvement in this. For not, I talked to Ross Dolan when they came down, and he mentioned that you organised tours and stuff. Uh, yeah, so uh, I own uh, the tour agency, uh, Direct Touring. So that's, that's what I do when I'm not uh, either rehearsing on the road or uh, teaching drums. Um, I book tours and bring out bands that I like. Now, how did you get involved in that? Because that's kind of something you expect people to engage with as musicians, not necessarily actually be that person. Uh, well, it was probably um, due to the fact that no one else would do it for us uh, in terms of psychoptic. So in the early days, I'd always booked at our own local shows and um, put on our own shows. Um, I remember when we started to tour some... Uh, with some consistency, uh, I had quite a big hand in organising a, a lot of the shows, um, whether it's whether it was booking or logistics or, or promo. Um, and then um, uh, it must be about well over ten years ago, um, I decided to, to lend a hand to US band Deeds of Flesh to, to come out and do their their first Australian tour because um, I thought well if I've done it with Psychotic I could probably use the same skills and, and book another band um, and ever since then um, I've, uh, I've been involved with it um, I usually bring out the two between two and four bands a year uh, in between uh, Psychotic tours um, yeah and it's, it's something um I just really enjoy and uh, I hope to uh, continue doing it for a long time. Now, in terms of festivals, this is kind of a bigger question as of late with the demise of Soundwave, the rescheduling of, I think it was the Legion Festival. In terms of these kind of festivals, whether it's larger like those festivals or smaller like this one, how important is it that they exist, the ones that are by and for Australia? I think they're very important. Uh, it's... <laughs> both for the bands and the fans. Um, in terms of, for the bands, it, it, you know, it gives the bands an opportunity to play in front of a lot of different people that might not have um, ever come across the band before. Um, so it helps expand their, uh, their fan base. And for the fans, it gives them an opportunity, you know, vice versa, to check out bands that they might not have seen before. Um, so, you know, the... the Demise of Soundwave was, um, yeah, a, a terrible thing for your average punter, um, you know, because they are quite sport for choice with these massive lineups that, I guess, in the end were uh, not financially viable. Uh, and then the same thing with Legion Fest, that promised to come along and save the day, but I think that was just um, grandstanding and trying to take advantage of the situation. Um, but that's not the point. Mm. Um, in terms of um, the small festival that we're putting on um, I guess the ethos is putting together a, a kick-ass lineup uh, affordable price 
uh, and um, uh, just doing as many shows as possible. So this this will be the first first year, obviously. We're we're starting out small scale, and if it goes well, then let's uh, let's gradually build it up and see where we can take it. Do you think that might be the future of these uh, Australian, at least heavy metal festivals, these kind of smaller, more target events, which kind of don't necessarily spoil for people for choice, but definitely give people what they're interested in when they come to see the show? Uh, <clears throat> good question. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> if I had the definitive answer, then I'd be doing it. So um, I'm always out for trying new and different things. Uh, and um, I know Youngie from King Parrot, he's a He's uh, always up for uh, for cool new ideas and, and working hard. So um, together, let's uh, see what we can do. Mm, last question on the festival. I've, I've talked to Tim Charles from Native of Scaras twice, and he talks, especially recently, about the issues with being in a band, especially the touring aspect of it. And it's part of that is the fact that a lot of these problems are hidden from people. We kind of go and see p- uh, shows, and we just assume it's all good, that they're, they're making money and all that, because no one really talks about it. In terms of the tour, the, these festivals, do you think it m- might be because maybe people's expectations are too high and they're just not aware of how much effort really goes into putting in these massive things? And if we were more aware, maybe more understanding things might be able to balance it, itself out? Uh, I mean, yes and no. Um, obviously, there is a lot of planning and effort and work that goes into um, putting together any sort of show or, you know, large or small. Um, but, you know, the person who works in uh, in the music store, you know, they've gone through a lot of effort to um, to train up and learn all the ins and outs of the specific equipment and blah, blah, blah. Um, so <laughs> what I'm trying to say is um, with it's a choice to undertake these things. You know? So mm. there is a lot of effort, a lot of time, and a lot of money spent on this, but if it's not appealing to the public, then it's not viable, and then move on, do something else. Um crying poor and saying come and save us because you should save us, I think is just a f- excuse and a waste of time. Um, that's my opinion. Um, so I guess our our ethos for this is put, put together something that's appealing to the punters, keep it affordable so it's appealing, and put on a good show so it's appealing for people to come back. Don't just say this was this costs us heaps of money to put together. Um, this took a lot of time, a lot of planning. So you've got to come out, regardless of whether it's good or bad. You know, that's that's just being arrogant and lazy. Hopefully that makes sense. Me personally, I saw Psychroptic support aborted. I can't remember when. Um, must, I, my memory's failing me. It was a couple of years ago, I think. Yeah, 2014. Oh, was it that long ago? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> And really fun band to watch. Really enjoyed it, and it was a great time. Now, how do you prepare mentally and physically for a show to kind of put that energy into it? Uh, well, yeah, a lot of a lot of rehearsal behind the scenes. Um, I, myself personally, um, fitness is quite an important aspect because drumming is quite physical. So, uh, whether I like it or not, I've got to train a lot physically to, to be able to play this sort of music. Um, and then, I guess on stage, you get the extra adrenaline rush and the extra um, energy from from the crowd just being there and um, the appreciation of being able to to perform. So, um, a lot of behind the scenes, and then a lot of uh, riding on the energy as well from from the room itself. Now, in terms of Cryptic, you're a band who seems to progress on every album um how do you kind of keep that momentum going i I know it's only been a year since your last album i'm not saying like hey when's your next album coming but i'm just uh talking kind of a kind of a a feeling how do you keep that momentum going in terms of the band yeah good question um 
We do get a lot of energy from from touring and performing um, in terms of, you know, the individual show, but then also a sense of accomplishment when you've completed a tour and um, the appreciation that you're able to actually do it, you know. It's, um, that uh, That's a very positive and motivating force. So for us to progress as a band, we always want to do something that's for ourselves enjoyable, engaging, and um, inspiring. So we, we're pretty selfish in the way that we write. Um, you know, we're going to write for ourselves um, and write and perform music that we want to play, and we're stoked that actually people did what we do and come out and, come out and watch us. So uh, progressing as a band um, has... It's, it's always been a, um, you know, if, if we don't, we'll, we'll stop um, because we just get sick of it, get bored of it, you know. So we've always got to be engaged and entertained and moving forward. Um, so that's where the, the progression comes from. Um, we always want to do different, you know, different things. We don't want to put out the same album time over, you know, time and again. Um, so. It, it just it comes out in the jam room, you know. We we're always open to new ideas and new ways of doing things, and um, sometimes that um, well, a lot of the times it's um, where the like, shifts in, I guess, the style or direction comes from. It's a long-winded answer for, for us just saying we like to do what we do and, <laughs> and we don't like to get bored. Fair enough. I was surprised when reading up on you, <laughs> stuff you do, it's, it's almost as if there is no band you haven't been in, which speaks to the fact that I can talk to you about the upcoming festival with Psychroptics involved in, but also Ruins, which you're, all, you're also playing, which released an album in October. How do you find time for all this? I mean, it's pretty incredible. Uh, well, not really, not really. Um, I, I feel very, I feel like I do, could do a hell of a lot more. Um, <laughs> it, it's, I've never found um, it hard to manage any schedules, uh, to be honest. Um, nothing's really ever clashed, and it's just planning in advance to either tour, record, uh, write, or, or, when it comes down to organising a tour. So um, I've just got a calendar and I look at it and I cross out the dates. <laughs> it's pretty simple, really. You, know. um, you just commit to the dates, whether it's an actual performance or whether it's an actual rehearsal or whether it's simply me going into the rehearsal room of a morning, you know, treating it like a, a part of my job. You know, Part of my job is to go and rehearse. Um, so I do have to schedule that in. So that's... That's really the, um, the only answer. It's just scheduling, and um, yeah, I, I feel like I could be a lot more productive. So I should uh, clear the calendar a little bit more. Fair. Out of rehearsal room. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the process for making a ruins album? Like, what, what's your part? Because it's kind of not your traditional band as such. No, no, no. So. Ruins is primarily myself and Alex. Um, Alex Speed, the primary songwriter. Um, and it's different every, it's going to sound cliche, but every album is completely different in the way we do things. Um, some albums will get in the rehearsal room and, and jam the songs out and demo the songs um, in detail. Uh, this past album, most of the material I hadn't even heard before entering the studio so um, there was uh, and that was quite an enjoyable thing like very much a spontaneous um, uh, in terms of my drum parts and it was more like instant my instant reaction to every riff uh, and then going back and recording it um, so yeah it's completely varied every time we do it so next next time could be um, a, a Ruins album usually starts out with me hassling Alex riff because I want to jam to the new stuff <laughs> <laughs> which is about now because your new album's out 
Um, so I'll, I'll send him a text after I get off the phone and say, you got any new riffs? And then three, to, three years later, we'll, we'll have a new album. Since Ruins kind of primarily studio-focused, would that, would that be right in saying? Uh, mm, yes and no. I mean, we did start out as primarily a studio band, but then um, when we figured out we could do it live, we, uh, we started touring. Um, I guess it was, it's something that I would personally like to do a lot more touring, but um, it's just at this at this point in time with everyone's personal commitments um, and family and whatnot, um, it's just not possible. So I wouldn't say we're a studio band uh, by choice, but more by default. So we we get out and perform when um, either when there's a cool offer or uh, we just decide it's time to to do something. What's it like touring or playing shows, for that matter, with a band which doesn't do it as much as compared with Psychroptic, which will do some larger tours? Um, it can be very spontaneous and uh, a little bit nerve-wracking because we don't rehearse. We just <laughs> turn up and play. It's a, we're all expected to know our part. Yeah. Um, sometimes we hit it out of the park and sometimes it's complete dog shit. It just, <laughs> it just depends on the night. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's enjoyable. I like it. That's good. The, the artwork. Do you do you have any knowledge of that? Uh, Alex, um, it's one of his original pieces. Oh, really? That's really yeah. interesting because it kind of has. Uh, this could be interpreted as insulting, but it kind of has a very vague sensibility about it. It's not 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 particularly stand out at any particular part of it. I really I really thought I really liked it. Yeah, it was. Uh, Alex does a lot of art, um, and I was in his house one night, and I just saw it there, and I said, "Can I have that, or can I buy it?" You know, it just you know, immediately appealed to me. Um, I just love the artwork. Um, I think it was killer, and <clears throat> it wasn't. I don't think there was any plans to make it the album cover at the time. It was just, you know, he creates art. He's an artist. Um, in all senses of the word, you know, music and uh, visual art and writing, whatever. It's just his outlet. So, um, yeah, that was, for me, that was the artwork. When I first saw it, it was something that, I don't know, it struck a chord with me and I was like, this is, this is amazing. So, um, when he sent through the draft of the actual album cover, it's like, oh, wow, okay, cool. It was, uh, it was the perfect fit, um, mm. and for me, it was unexpected because I didn't even I didn't even know that he was, was going to use it. Some of the work you've done previously with uh, bands like Aborted and Pestilence, that's it's kind of incredible. Like there's some bands with a lot of history behind them, and you know a, a, a lot of uh, reputation. How did you get involved in some of those projects? Because you know you're a great great drummer, but you kind of I don't mean to sound insulting, but like you know, Melbourne, Tassie, they're not like necessarily the places you kind of expect the drummers from, uh, in the aborted case, Belgium, and I can't remember where Pestilence comes from, but Europe. Then It's not yeah, necessarily it's the connection you would make. Yeah, um, I guess it was just right place, right time kind of thing. Um, in the case of aborted, um, they've been long-time friends, and they just lost their drummer, and I was talking to Sven... <clears throat> I think I was on tour at the time. Um, I was talking to Sven online um, in the early days of MSN Messenger or something like that because I think it was around 2005, 2006 from memory. Um, and he said, well, we don't have a drummer. Everything's gone to shit, blah, blah, blah. And it was just an offhanded comment. So I'd, I'd happily do your new album. And then three weeks later, I was in the studio and tells you you're recording the drum tracks because they're on a deadline so um, that's how that came about um, there was never any talk about doing anything live for them I think it was more helping them out of the bind um, and in terms of pestilence um, I think my name just came up in conversation with 
among the members because uh, I've been touring quite a lot around that time through Europe. So they're based in Holland and they've uh, seen me perform and I think they liked um, my style and my approach. Um, they just didn't get no for them. They liked what they heard. And uh, yeah, I've tracked their, their album for them. I also noticed that you drum for Germ, who I've interviewed, in I think it was his only show for the year at Prophecy Fest. Yeah, yeah, that was that was quite a cool uh, <laughs> and very unique festival. Um, that was another another case of um, just helping out. Um, he needed a drummer. Uh, uh, my girlfriend is very good friends with um, his wife. Um, my name came up in conversation and. and I generally don't turn down offers when I get them because it's like, cool, this is, you know, yeah, sure, I'll come over to Germany and do one show with you. That sounds like a cool idea, sure. So if anyone else has got crazy ideas, hit me up. Two questions about you, because I always like to get people's perspective on kind of their history in the, you know, and, and the music that they've kind of felt important to them. How did you first get into heavy metal? Uh, I bought Metallica's Ride the Lightning, uh, I think I was about eight at the time because I'd seen it. I'd seen the artwork on a lot of people's back patches, and I thought those guys are cool. Um, so I tracked it down. Didn't really know what I was getting myself into, <laughs> uh, and from then just became addicted. I was like, "This is the this is the most extreme and intense thing. I'm not sure if I should be listening to it, but I really like it." and I need to listen to more of this. Um, yes, I started out listening to Metallica and then Motley Crue, Guns N' Roses, uh, and then progressed on to uh, you know Slayer, Pantera, and then I guess got into the more heavier sides of things when I heard Australian bands uh, like Damaged and the Bremelin and Blood Duster. So yes. Uh, I've been into the heavier side of music since since I was a kid, um, and I just assumed everyone was into it because I loved it so much. And it's like, well, everyone should, everyone <laughs> must be into this because it's so cool. <laughs> and it wasn't until later that I found out that no, not everyone is into this. Most people think it's rubbish. Yeah, it doesn't quite make sense, does it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have, there, have there been any bands or albums that have been particularly influential to you? I guess I've got uh, albums for kind of each genre that I'll gravitate towards. Um, you know, obviously Ride the Lightning is one of it. One of them. Um, kill them all. Um, and then uh, different albums by genre. So if I'm talking black metal, uh, you know, Nemesis of Inner. Um, I love that album. Um, uh, we're talking more modern stuff. Uh, you can't go past well, the modern sound. Um, you know, Pantera, um, Far Beyond Driven, uh, I think some like to be. Um, uh, you know, the cliche. A cliche is a cliche for a, a reason because it's usually true. You know, Rain and Blood, obviously, um, mm. going to be a classic. Um, but yeah, it, it, it changes all the time. You know, I could list off all the different albums, but. Um, any albums that, that uh, make the hair stand up on your back of your neck, that usually is the, the tick of approval. One last question. My friend asked me to ask you, I, was, uh, I hit him up, he's a drummer, but unfortunately he didn't have any interesting drum questions. But regardless... Um, I don't have any interesting drum answers. <laughs> well, well, that's convenient then. <laughs> he asked me, because I, 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 I'm a bit unclear, but I, I, you're, you're still involved in the Inventor, aren't you? I guess uh, I don't know whether the band exists or not. Okay, um, that answers that question all, then. Yeah, they're all very good friends of mine. Um, Eric, um, Eric and Tim, the main guys, um, they're quite close friends. Um, I know they've got material written. I know there's an album written, uh, and whether or not that ever sees, you know, whether it gets into the studio to get recorded, um, I don't know. I don't know. I'll. Uh, I'll keep hassling Eric about it and see. But uh, I'm not sure. That's, that's a good question. 
Dave Haley, drummer for Psychroptic, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, Thrash Blast and Grind Festival, Melbourne on the 17th of February at Max Watts. And also Ruin's new album, Undercurrent, is out now. Um, Dave, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, no worries. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks for listening to the Mosh Pit Backstage Podcast. You can subscribe to us on iTunes and Omni. To find out more about the show, go to www.syn.org.au slash moshpit. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash moshpitonsin and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at moshpitsin. The regular Moshpit radio show broadcasts punk, rock and male tunes and interviews every Thursday nights on Sin 9.7 on FM and digital radios. Listeners outside of Melbourne, Australia can stream Sin 9.7 online at www.syn.org.au. Thanks to Vintage Ruin for the music. Hi, this is Tomato from Flash Gun Apocalypse. Hi, I'm Enid from Girls School. I am Phoebe Pinnock from Heaven the Axe. Hey, this is Gary Oldman of the Misfits. Hey, this is Kat Sproul from Horizon's Edge, and you're listening to The Moss Pit on Sin FM. Hi, this is Aina from Leopard. Hi, I'm Virginia Lilly from the band Lilly. This is Ron from 1449. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Ali from Eberhead. Hey everybody, this is Charlie Benante with Anthrax, and you are listening to the Mosh Pit on Tips.